Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the, uh, we're going to be talking about a step-by-step -step system to build out your Amazon e-commerce business. And we're going to find out uh, how to find the right product niche, the step the step-by-step -step process to build out your business. And also we're going to talk about our guest's biggest mistakes, what he's learned from it. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, like I said, today our guest is going to be taking us through a step-by-step -step system to building your Amazon and e-commerce business. Our guest has had a, our guest is a three-time college dropout. I'm only a one-time, so he beats me there. But uh, a three-time college dropout, a serial entrepreneur, and he's based a fellow Canadian in Vancouver, Canada. We were just in that awesome city just a couple days ago. Anyways. Uh, after many years of struggle, he ended up selling his e-commerce business for multiple millions of dollars. And today he is an active investor in e-commerce brands and is also a founder of FBA Masterclass, an industry leading community with over 3,400 Amazon sellers and growing. Now, I might be wrong, but, uh, when we were talking last podcast, Kelsey, um, Tom has over 30,000 followers on YouTube. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyways, our awesome guest today is Tom Wang, and we will get to him right after this sponsor. If you're selling on Amazon in 2022, you know how important it is to stand out from your competition. Let Hona Worldwide lend a helping hand with your product innovation to outcompete your competition online. That's right. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the success of your newly innovative product while Hono handles all the work. Visit HonoWorldwide.com for more information. That's Honu, H-O-N-U, Worldwide.com, or email savings at HonuWorldwide.com. All right, where is the boy Blunder? Hello, hello. Did you screw me up? Doing? Did you screw I... me up? I think this is all you. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, honestly. You did great. I think you did a, a fantastic job. I'm not losing it. A little bit, but we're used to it. You keep giving me, you feed me <laughs> really bad information. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're saying. You told me, oh my God, I, I did, I'm not even going to talk to you about it. No, Anyways. Right, right. Hey, oh. Okay, that's fine. Don't screw well, me up. I, I'm old, but I'm not senile. I'm getting there because of you. But uh, <laughs> anyway, let's get on Anyways. with this thing. Do your thing. Smash those things. Whatever you say, go for it. That's right. You're here at the Lunch with Norm podcast. We start off by smashing those like buttons, giving us a thumbs up. Uh, yeah. So if you're new to the podcast, we do this every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. You can go ahead and join our Facebook group, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and E-Commerce Collective. That's where all the fun happens. That's where you can ask your questions, join an awesome community. Um, we have an awesome webinar with Carbon 6 happening on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're going to be going over Pixel Me and how to use that. And uh, Clayton from Carbon 6 is actually going to give away some freebies too. So make sure you join. Um, that's 3 p.m. Eastern time. That's hey, different from the Lunch with Norm podcast. Ask yes. Clayton for some freebies as well. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely <laughs> see what I can do. But <laughs> but we love uh, Carbon 6 over there. So uh, we're super excited. This is our first kind of exclusive webinar we're doing. So uh, we want to do more of these too. So definitely check out the Facebook group. And uh, if you're watching from YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel below uh, and ring that bell so you get all the notifications. And um, yeah, we're going to be talking about um, Tom's story and how he built out his business and ended up selling. So uh, if you have any questions, if there's anything you can relate to let us know in the comment sections um i think this is going to be an awesome episode and um a fellow canadian as well so um yeah don't forget to smash those like buttons and we can get started all right fantastic okay just like kelsey said if you have questions or comments throw them over into the comment area 
And now sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the show. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me, Norm. How was your trip to Vancouver? It was awesome. We we just had a, a blast. Uh, you know, just went out and did some really fine dining, ate a lot of awesome ice cream. Nice. Yep. Found some really cool ice cream shops. And uh, no, just it was my first uh, time really exploring Vancouver. Gotcha. So, yeah, that was cool. My son took me on all sorts of different tours and yeah, it was cool. Sweet. Awesome. It's a, it's a lovely city when it doesn't rain. <sighs> yeah, I guess we were kind of lucky. It only, it rained a bit one day, but uh, you know, it, if anybody, if you've never gone to Vancouver, you've got to check it out. It, I, it's gotta be like, I always say Quebec city is my favorite Canadian city because of that European feel, but just for beauty, uh, mm. Vancouver is just, I mean, it's, it's an awesome place to be. It is. So it is. You're lucky. You're lucky. If it wasn't as honestly, if it was, if it wasn't as awesome, I'd be, uh, I, I would love to get out of here because uh, it rains too much and yeah. uh, it's very expensive, but do you I never beauty? noticed that. <laughs> no, it's no last, last year is really got to me. Actually. It was just like nonstop rain. And uh, it really got to me after 20 years of living here. So yeah, well, you know, winter, we can uh, go somewhere and uh, enjoy the sunshine a little bit. Yeah. Well, you, you know, and I'll get off of Vancouver in a second and I'm sure nobody wants to hear about this, <laughs> but uh, one thing that blew me away is that uh, my son uh, lives with a family uh, in Vancouver and we went over there and they told us that, First of all, their doors and their windows were wide open, like no screens, like mm. just wide open. And I just thought that was wild. Like, okay, if you would not see that here because your your house would be bug infested in two seconds. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought that was really cool. Anyways, let's get on to today's subject. And uh, I, I want to talk to you a bit about, you, you know, you, you just building out your Amazon or, or e-commerce business and, and how you got started. Yeah. So, um, I, I came to Canada actually in 2001 with my parents. Uh, I was, uh, born and raised in China in a city called Harbin. It's up North close to Russia actually. So I grew up in China, had a pretty good childhood. And, uh, when I came to Canada at age of 10, it was a big culture shock. And also, uh, our lifestyle really changed in China. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to do a lot of things. I was able to go on vacations, dine out, eat at restaurants. When we came to Canada, the money was really, really tight. Uh, my parents came here with $6,000 basically. So that was enough to afford a few months of rent, food. And uh, my dad took on a job as a, uh, he was an engineer in China. So making great salary, well-respected role here. Everything shifted. He had to work in like a, uh, as like a assistant at a family office. Um, and, uh, my mom, she's this, you know, small, tiny Asian woman. And back in China, she was a, uh, professor. She was like a professor teaching accounting at a very prestigious university. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when she came here, she, you know, didn't speak a word of English and, uh, but she was really good at accounting and she was really good at numbers. And just based off how much my dad was earning versus our monthly burn rate of living expenses, she's like, things are not adding up here. If. You know, you're the only one that's working and I don't work. I look after Tom and clean around the house and just doing, you know, housewife stuff. We wouldn't be able to live a good life. So um, uh, she took on not one job, not two jobs, but three jobs. Uh, yeah, she she was a cleaner. She was a tutor. And then she uh, washed dishes in the middle and, and, and at, at night. So kind of growing up, having that culture shift really kind of um, – you know, shook my head a little bit. It's like, whoa, you know, money is really important. Um, money is money can get you the things such as vacation and 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 less stress and eating out and st so on and so forth. So, I kind of associated a lot of my um, I, I associated I, I put a lot of importance on making money due to that experience. And also in China, I was like a top A, like top grade student. I was like you know, A plus every single class, just because in China, like education is really, really important. And it's very, very, very important to the to the parents and whatever. Um, so in China, I studied a lot, I got good grades. But then when I came to Canada, I noticed that, hey, like kids here actually don't focus on school that much. Like they, yeah, they focus on school, but it's like, there's a balance between like playtime and like, 
you know, lifestyle versus like just study, study, study. So I was like, oh, interesting. So I kind of adapted to that lifestyle. And then and my parents didn't really like that. They're like, Tom, you got to like do homework. You got to like do this, do that. I'm like, there's not enough homework for me to do. Like uh, in China, you get buried with homework. Like right. there's endless amounts of homework here. It's like you get <laughs> you, you there's like five minutes of homework. You're done. So that kind of began like a little bit of a culture clash between my parents and I as well in terms of just like how we how I want to live my life. But um, anyway, um, throughout high school, I did all right. I went to university and uh, got kicked out of UBC after the very first semester because of my bad grades. Um, I lived on campus and my parents were very, very strict. But once I lived on campus, they can't control me anymore. So I just I just let it was like you became a wild child. Yes, yes. The chicken was out of the coop, basically. And uh, <laughs> so I actually got my grades were so bad. I remember in, in calculus, I got uh, 8% in calculus. I skipped a midterm. I showed up to the final. I have no idea what I was doing. That's how bad it was. But uh, I got kicked out. And then at that point, that was like one of the lowest points of my life. Uh, well, that's the beginning of the lowest points of my life. Because you have to understand, Norm, like, your son getting kicked out of UBC, which is a pretty prestigious school, but I was in the arts program. I wasn't in like the business or pre-med or anything like that. But still, that's a very, very bad event. Um, and um, next to me dying, I think that might be the second worst event <laughs> that could have happened to them, to a Chinese parent. Uh, then, you know, more fighting between my parents and I. And then uh, in second year, I went to another college. I got kicked out of that because I just wasn't interested in school. And then third year, I went to another college, got kicked out of that. And at that point, a lot of my friends and family started, or sorry, a lot of my friends who I went to high school with started getting like job offers and this and that. I was like, man, like I better get my shit together. So I finally went to the fourth school and then I finished a two-year diploma degree. And from there, I um, ended up getting a job at Yellow Pages, selling like online advertising and phone book advertising. I did really, really well in that job um, because I wanted to, I'm like, hey, now that I finished school, I want to prove to other people that like, I'm not just an idiot who's getting kicked out of school. So like, I can actually do something I can make up again. I'm associating making money with success, with my self-worth almost, because at this point people are like, wow, like who gets kicked out of th three schools? Like you're doing nothing. Like I was going to casinos and drinking and partying and doing nothing, just wasting my life away. Right. So I had this big chip on my shoulder and I said, well, I'll show you guys that I'm worthy be by making a lot of money at this job. So I ended up making, you know, six figures after the very first year of college. And that's kind of when Amazon came in because I, this is in 2015 now. And then I was, I've always had these like little side hustles uh, throughout my life. And then um, I met this guy who I was trying to sell these hoverboards online. And I wasn't able to sell them successfully on my own e-commerce store. And this guy came up to me and was like, hey, I can help you to sell these products for you on Amazon. I was like, Amazon? That's I thought like people only bought textbooks on Amazon. But sure, like good luck selling these on Amazon. And the first day he did like FBM, right? He did he did three sales the very first day. I was like, holy crap, like what is this Amazon thing? That's how I discovered Amazon 2015-16. And uh, while I was working at Yellow Pages, my fiance, um, she was my girlfriend at the time, but now fiance, she's, uh, she was an account manager at UPS. So both of us had our nine to five jobs. But then afterwards, we would just, she would like, she would ask me like, hey, Tom, what are you doing? Like, what's this Amazon thing? Because I'm trying to learn, right? And I'm trying to pick a product. And I had such a hard time picking a product. And she's like, well, let, why don't you let me help you? So I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do this together. So we'll go to work after work. We'll like sit in front of a computer. I watch some YouTube videos, listen to a couple of podcasts, and then just like passively learn that way. And then uh, we started our brand, uh, Sadara Skincare, which is a, a pro aging uh, skincare line on, on January 1st, 2017. So um, that's that's pretty much, you know, kind of my story. And that's mm -hmm. the how I discovered Amazon FBA. And that's how we launched the first product. Uh, under Sadara Skincare, January 1st, 2017. So it was 2007. It, you're kind of late to the game. I was on the cusp. I, w I was definitely not yeah. early, but I remember right before I launched the product, our plan was to buy a lot of um, 
uh, just buy reviews because at that mm-hmm. time you can, you can buy reviews, you can yep. launch a product. And November right is- before we launched, right before we launched, Amazon came out with the, came, came down with a ban. And you know, Mike Tyson had the saying, right? Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. So yep. our, our plan just got completely thrown out at that time. My, my parents were living in Los Angeles and my parents are, um, uh, they're very religious. They go to church and I was like, mom, how many people go to that church? It's like, I don't know, like two, 300 people. I'm like, all right, I'm selling products on Amazon. I need you to tell all these people to buy my product on Amazon. And leave me a review. It's like, okay. And she ended up getting like, I don't know, like 15, 20 reviews that way. So that's, that was pretty funny. Oh uh, yeah. It was so different uh, back, back then when you could uh, even get the incentivized reviews until November, 2017, I remember losing about 3000 reviews off of my one soap and just getting killed. But um, anyways, uh, and you know what? Uh, So anybody who's listening and yeah, you do get punched in the face, as you say, (laughs) or Mike Tyson says, uh, you get used to it. Yeah. So, you know, I always say, you you know, we have to be resilient. Uh, Most of the time selling on Amazon, it's love, hate, but uh, you get kicked between the legs. The first time is pretty tough. The second time, not so bad. Well, it still would hurt, but uh, you keep getting up. And for the people who keep getting up and keep learning, uh, they're the ones that succeed. So you have to continue to learn um, not only to understand Amazon, but just business in general. Now, I'm kind of curious. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about And one of the things you're very proficient in are finding product niches. So right now, 2022, uh, what are some good tips that you can give us in uh, product opportunity or finding niches? Yeah, that's, I think that's like the make or break of your Amazon business, like period. Mm -hmm. If you, you can give a bad product in a bad niche to the best and the greatest Amazon seller with the greatest hacks, with the greatest amount of whatever, um, I doubt they will be able to succeed. But if you give a great product offering and a great product niche to even someone who's not very good at Amazon, Amazon will carry the load and do a lot of work for them. So I think Amazon, in order for you to succeed on Amazon, and it's the foundation of an Amazon business, right? You're selling a product. So, I mean, in terms of how, like, I, 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 I like to kind of teach by like my own stories because yeah. ultimately I'm not here to say like I'm the greatest Amazon seller or whatever, like far from it. But, um, but I have learned a lot from my, just my own experiences. But step one is I think what we did right with star skincare was building a brand. I think a lot of Amazon sellers, they go on Alibaba, they find something that's interesting. They go on viral launch, they go on helium 10, they type in some criteria. And by the way, these criteria are the exact same criteria as everybody else is using. Absolutely. (laughs) Yep. It's like, it's like, all right, let's get started on Amazon. You watch some YouTube videos, every single YouTuber is talking about the same criteria. So you got this influx of people typing in the same stuff on helium 10. Everybody is launching the same product. And they're like, Oh, Amazon's too saturated. Well, duh, it's very saturated. If you end up launching the same product as thousands of other people, that's literally the definition of saturation. But if you can think outside the box and don't launch something that Helium 10 viral launch is just like, like spitting out, then I think you're on a much better path. But um, our first product didn't do so well. Uh, it's a vitamin C serum, which is very competitive looking back. But hey, like we didn't know what we're doing and you learn. Second product was a silicone makeup sponge, and that was a complete fad. By the time we launched, the average price went from like fifteen dollars to like five dollars. So we had to like just clear out our inventory, and that was a huge fad. So we learned our lesson not to launch a product pro- product that's a fad. And the third product, which is our hero product, was a micro needle derma roller. Uh, I know now everybody talks about derma rollers and whatever, and probably viral launch a helium 10, probably put that in their list somewhere. And that's why everybody's launching it. But we got in pretty good uh, at a good time, but we actually found that product on social media. We just, um, we weren't on viral launch. We weren't on helium 10. We were just browsing Instagram. My fiance was like, Hey, like, this is interesting. So the first tip I give to viewers is people say, well, Tom, like helium, I can't use the helium 10. I can't use viral launch. What do I use to find products? I think social media is actually one of the best places to find product ideas. So I learned this method from my friend, Jake, who owns a, um, a store selling, uh, these slippers, 
They're called pillow slides. So he he sells about a million bucks a month on his own on his own website. Wow. Um, just yeah, just off these slippers It's freaking crazy. But uh, he's he's done very well in the e-commerce space and doesn't really sell on Amazon. But he gave me a tip. He says, "I want you to create a second Facebook account or use your main Facebook account. Doesn't matter. Um, but I want you to just like." Every single time you see an ad of like a product, I want you to click on it. I want you to scroll through it and I want you to click add to cart because then now you're feeding the Facebook algorithm that you are, you are an active shopper and uh, Facebook is going to give you more and more and more and more and more product uh, ads. So, um, so that's what you should do. And so and hold on. That's, seeing... that's a great tip. That's a great tip. Yeah. So you, you go to Facebook you start clicking add to cart, the algorithm yes. picks it up and it's just starts feeding you new products or products. Yes. And then, That's or Instagram tip. or TikTok or whatever it might yep. be. Every single time you see a product on social media, click on it, add to cart, don't buy it, don't buy it if you want, but then just keep doing that. And Facebook will give you more ads. And there's so many people that are using Facebook to sell their products. Right. And, and, um, uh, and, and, uh, you're going to start seeing some ads that are very interesting and you want to look at their view count of the video ads. Do they have, you know, 10,000 views? Do they have a million views? Do they have 5 million views, 10 million views? Obviously the ads that have like five, 10 million views, these guys are running crazy ads and they're, you know, they're, 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 they're uh, doing a good job of selling the product. And then that's when you can maybe see, Hey, like, do I want to take that product and sell that product on Amazon? Not copy and paste, um, but how do I improve upon this product, read the comment section and then make some changes of my own and then put my kind of own design of it on Amazon. Um, and I think with product niches, like before you sell a product on Amazon, just go on Amazon to do a quick search. Like, let's mm -hmm. say you want to do like, um, I don't know, like coasters, like, um, yeah, go on Amazon typing coasters. And let's say you have this like idea in your head about this one specific coaster, like, is that design? specific design already on Amazon killing and dominating the niche. If it is probably don't do it because how are you going to compete with someone who's already outranked you, out reviewed you unless you have like this other crazy design. But if the design itself is not on Amazon, um, like that's way better than if like five people with the same product, with the same design is already on Amazon. So there's a good book called, um, uh, blue ocean strategy, right? It talks yes. about blue ocean, the red yeah. ocean. So I think everybody should read that book. Um, Right now, a lot of Amazon sellers are getting themselves in trouble because they're playing in the red ocean. Uh, you are competing on pricing. You are competing on just competition after competition after competition. You're fighting for every penny and PVC bids and this and that. It's, it, it's, 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 it's a lot of work. But once you can find your blue ocean, which is a product that is not on Amazon, you're solving your problem and you're understanding the customer psychology. You can provide a great product experience for them. Um, it's actually a very easy game still. So, you know, one of the things I was saying, um, uh, I think it was on Monday, we have a very competitive product. The average price for this product uh, on Amazon is 49 to $69. Okay. It's in the pet uh, niche. Our product is 150 to $200. Ooh. The average, the average, Average Amazon seller uh, with lower price products, I, I think, is having a, a small downturn right now. On mm. Prime Day, we did incredibly well. Not only mm. over the last few months are we up almost double from last year with the high-priced, high-perceived value ticket uh, ticket item. Uh, but get this, our twenty-five on DLE. I've ever had grow as as high as 25. I've seen like 2.5, 7. But what this tells me is that people with money will continue to have money. And if you're going to want to deal, like you were talking about Red Ocean with all those competitive prices, I went, made a, something a little bit different at an extremely high price that almost looks the same as the person at 69 and yet we're cleaning up. We're actually killing it with this product. And uh, anyways, I, I just want to give that out there. So um, high priced or quality products, product innovation, you can still do extremely well. And 
a hundred percent agree with, you know, you can use um, the x-ray, like so let's say with helium 10 or the other competitors out there. Uh, but that's, that's a starting point. Uh, I like going out and looking at what's uh, like, whatever you're looking at, um, uh, what's it called? Kickstarter or over yeah. at uh, Dragon's Den or Shark Tank or just yes. to get some product ideas. And then you can expand on it. And then when you go over to Amazon and, you know, maybe you don't see the exact thing, but you see something similar, check out the product reviews and see what sucks and what doesn't suck. Yes. So, yeah. Anyways, you're off the hook on that one. And uh, let's see, before we get to the next question, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, first of all, just let everybody know um, that, I am going to be uh, attending the uh, Kevin King uh, BDSS. I just bought my ticket. So, uh, yes, I buy my ticket as well. It's not a giveaway. Uh, <laughs> anyways, well, maybe I could talk to Kevin one of these days. Anyway, uh, Kevin did give us um, uh, a price break. So this is an exclusive to the podcast. Um, he is giving away, he's taking off $1,000. Uh, he limits it to 100 people. At 100, he cuts off um, the, uh, the the tickets. It's 100 uh, people only, and that's it. So, if you're interested, there will be a link in the uh, in the uh, comment section or on the in the group for $1,000 off either the regular ticket or the uh, VIP ticket. So, check it out. And if you're in Austin, you know. Uh, the date uh, before I'm going to be coming in, I think two days before uh, let's meet up, let's have a meetup in Austin. So uh, hopefully uh, we can meet a lot of the listeners while we're there and even over at BDSS. So um, have you ever gone by the way? I have not. No. Oh, it's, it's good. It, it is a very good event. Kevin always puts on a fantastic event, really high quality speakers. Yes. And uh, makes them compete. He it's a, it's a contest. $5,000. You're not allowed to pitch. Uh, it's just pure content. And the person who, it might even be more this year, but it was last year, $5,000 for the best um, speaker. So they're all very competitive. So it'll be in the comment comment section or it'll be on the, in the Facebook group. Uh, we don't make an affiliate at all on this. We don't make a penny. All I did was ask Kevin if we could get a discount and nobody else is getting this discount. It's just for our group. Uh, all right. So we are having a wheel of Kelsey today. Um, we're going to uh, add a couple of things to the uh, bonus pack, but you have something you want to give away. It's going to be a hashtag wheel of Kelsey. Stay tuned towards, uh, or we can give the mystery word away now. Uh, Kelsey will come on in a second, but what is the uh, giveaway today, Tom? Yeah, I actually just uh, finished my book over here, the simple over... wa the simple path to Amazon wealth. Um, okay, so it's getting printed right now, and uh, so I'd love to uh, give some copies out. Fantastic! And I also heard Kelsey mention something about uh, there is uh, access to your group or something like that for free. Um, no, so I have a free training. Um, uh, free training. That's yes, it. I have a free training. You can find some information on fbamasterclass.io. masterclass.io. Um, so again, fbamasterclass.io. masterclass.io. So it's a course that I created. Um, and, uh, it just, you know, basically again, I like to teach based on my own experience. I kind of built this skincare brand up. Um, you know, we did, I think at the height it was about $3.2 million in revenue. Uh, we ended up selling the business to Thrasio, um, at a good time. Um, <laughs> uh, a few, uh, December, 2020. Um, so kind of gone through the entire experience of learning and, be, you know, knowing yeah. nothing about Amazon and then exiting. So doing the whole thing. And now I kind of packaged all my information and all my knowledge and what I know about product research, launching products, using influencers, PPC, all that type of stuff, package into a course. And then, uh, whoever wants to learn can learn. Fantastic. Okay. So Kelsey, if you want to come on and let us know what that mystery word is. All right. We're going to keep it nice and simple for today. It's going to be hashtag Tom. Hashtag Tom is the mystery keyword. So okay. uh, if you're new to the podcast, if you want to enter it is hashtag wheel of Kelsey and hashtag Tom, and you get entered uh, 
in the giveaway. So you just put that in the comment sections. And uh, if you tag two people, so with that little at symbol and then tag two people, you get entered twice. And then we're going to let everyone know who won at the very end of the podcast. And we're sweetening up the pie as well. Uh, we're going to give away, if you give us the keywords uh, and the basic information about your product, we're going to create and distribute a press release for you. So that's the $200 value. As well, uh, we'll send you out a mug if you're in Canada or the US. So it'll be a Lunch with Norm mug, which in the dishwasher, I need more of them. But uh, anyways, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sweeten that up. So you have Tom's great book, the press release, and one of our mugs. So hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, hashtag Tom, and tag two people. Now a word from our sponsor. Maybe. A big thank you to our sponsor, Startup Club the largest club on Clubhouse with over 790,000 members and growing. They're one of the world's largest communities supporting the startup ecosystem from founders to those wishing to work for a startup and everything in between. You can find them at www.startup.club for blogs, recordings, and a calendar of upcoming shows and on the Clubhouse app. Just search Startup Club for daily shows 24-7. You can also now listen to their show, the Serial Entrepreneur Club podcast, on Apple and Spotify too. Stop by to connect, learn, and grow together. Hey, Tom, is this also an audiobook? The audiobook, yes, it is. Um I'm not 100% sure if it's ready or not, but you can try. You can get it Very on Amazon. Good. Yeah, yeah. There's an, audio, so I, there's an audible version as well. I, I, I just want to stress this. If you're new to Amazon, even if you're an experienced seller, to go through the trials and tribulations of somebody who's had to go through it, be resilient, get kicked a few times, uh, by learning by these people, uh, you will save paying your Amazon tax. You still got to pay your Amazon tax, but you won't have to pay as much. And I don't mean that, you know, the I, I, there's no real Amazon tax. I just mean that you have to spend some money. You'll make mistakes. So check it out. Uh, enter hashtag Willa Kelsey, hashtag Tom, and uh, you'll be entered into the uh, draw today. Okay, so let's go through some of the step-by-steps that you you made uh, building your business. So where did you start? What did you do? I just learned, like you said, I, I, I uh, you know, there's two ways to learn, right? The first way is to learn by yourself. And there's the other way is to learn from someone else. I, at the very beginning of my Amazon FBA journey, I just learned. I went on Google. I probably like everybody else. I typed in how to, how to make money on Amazon. Um, <laughs> and then I just read, I just, you know, um, I just try to absorb as much information as I can. One of the podcasts that really, really helped me actually was uh, many, uh, many coats uh, podcast uh, at the very beginning. Hey, me did you? Yeah. I I used to love that. I, I was on there a few times. Uh, yeah, the AM, giving, giving the updates podcast. way back, way yeah, back in yeah. the day. Yeah, the AMPM yeah. podcast was the best. Uh, that was I, the number one. Everybody was learning from Manny back then. The Illuminati. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're not yeah. a mastermind, but uh -huh. I, I thought it was great. I it was uh, a game changer. There was also a guy named Scott Velker, I believe. Yeah. 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 I forget the uh, name the of his podcast. Seller. Sorry. He had the Amazon seller. Yeah. Those two podcasts, I found a lot of value in because they would be interviewing a lot of just like what I just average like average uh, like not no no these people are not like born into a wealthy family these people weren't like some genius like they just seem like normal people they're like on the podcast they're like yeah like my husband and i were working like a nine to five job until we're like 40s and like we wanted to try something else so like we found amazon and now we're making xyz and for me when i hear stories like that the very first thing i always think is like okay like if they can do it can i do 50% of what they've done. And the answer is always yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a lot of confidence. Like, all right, well, this lady from like the Midwest of, you know, uh, of America does have not, does not have any e-commerce experience. 
and she's doing like a million dollars a year on Amazon. Can I do five hundred thousand dollars? I was like, yeah, right, maybe. And I um, and I just jumped in. And uh, again, the very first product didn't do so well. Uh, I think we're we were blown away at the revenue potential of vitamin C serums, but we didn't understand the competition. We didn't understand differentiation. We didn't understand how to rank a product, how to launch a product, how to do PPC. We, we didn't understand any of it. So a lot of my journey is just putting one foot instead of the, in, in front of the other and figuring out, uh, figuring everything out along the way. Um, I definitely didn't take the best path to learn, but at the same time, I took action and with action, you're going to have setbacks, you're going to have failures. And every single one of those setbacks and failures was a learning experience for me. So when it came to that Amazon tax you talked about, I think I paid the full amount. I, uh, I don't think there was too much. I, uh, I, I, I think if they audit me, they'll be like, all right, this guy's, this guy's clean. Um, so, so you got a refund at the end of the day, you got a big, Amazon yeah, yeah. I got a big refund, refund at the end. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I got a tax credit. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, in terms of step by step, like I said, at the very, very beginning, it was just learning. But then as we understood what we we're doing, obviously things got a little bit easier. Um, we understand how to find the right product. We understand how to validate the right product. We understand how to negotiate. We understand how to source the right product. We understand how to look what to look for in samples. We understand, hey, like here's a strategy for launch day. We understand how to like create an optimized listing. So a lot of these things just came from experience. Right. Well, that's, and it's so important that, you know, these type of um, experiences happen. You know, you, every time uh, something happens that I don't want to call it a failure. I always call it fail to succeed. You mm -hmm. know, you might fail, but it's one step closer to succeeding. And that's all these are. And even if you get really great, if you're, a complete expert in you think you're an expert in Amazon. Um, there's all going to be product or many products that come up that don't fit into that 80, 20 and you got to cut bait, but that's when, when you have, when you climb the ladder and you understand and it's not just a fluke home run, but how to make money, I think is, is where you learn to cut bait the quickest. Mm -hmm. I think, you yeah. Know? I think, so I, I I don't know your thoughts on that. Well, look, look, here's the thing: a lot of people are scared to take action because they're scared to fail. That's 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 it, right? Like if you yeah. if you know if you know you're going to succeed, everybody's going to take action, right? Like right. why not? Like how, the analogy I like to give to everybody is, um, let's say you're a dude and you're going out to try to pick up chicks at a bar. Like you're scared to approach. I, I that can't chick. relate to that. I, no, I can't no, really but, play, but, but oh, we all can, Norm. What, what, what? You know, <laughs> back in the good old days, I'm sure you. All you right, know, okay, yeah, way back, <laughs> way back. But, but, um, you know, I, you know, like a lot of, a lot of reason why people don't like to approach is because they're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be rejected, right? But yeah. if you know you're gonna approach someone and they're gonna say yes to whatever you ask them, like, you're just gonna go up and say, like, hey, what's up? My name is whatever, right? So, um, launching a product and kind of succeeding in business is almost the same thing. Like a lot of people don't end up launching a product because they're like, Oh, what if I fail? What if I, this, what if I, that, but here's the thing is you have to learn. And the way by learning is by doing, you can't watch a thousand hours of launch with norm or read my book a thousand times or watch my YouTube a thousand times. That's not how you learn. The only way human beings learn is by actually getting our hands dirty and by doing whatever you're trying to learn. And when you're doing, you are going to have setbacks because you are not an expert yet. Mm -hmm. If you do, if you do Amazon and you don't, and let's say you have no Amazon experience and you just crush it right out of the gate, you make zero mistakes. That means you're already an expert. So the question is, are you an expert or are you a beginner? So if you're a beginner, you have to accept the fact that you're going to be able to make some mistakes and you're going to have to learn from them. But a lot of people just can't see past that. They're like, oh man, what about a failure? And a lot of that dorm is because, you know, growing up, maybe this person had tried different businesses and they failed and their friends made fun of them. Their parents made fun of them. They lost a lot of money and it hurt. And 
there's a lot of like past trauma with regards to personal growth, right? So maybe now they're trying to start this business. It's not even so much that like they don't want to fail. It's just that they have that like subconscious level, like barrier to protect themselves so that their ego doesn't want to be hurt again. Right. right. So they're like, oh, like I want to do this business, but there's all this it's like invisible wall that every single time I go in here, like it bounces me back. Like, why is that? I don't get it. What's happening? A lot of that is actually based on like your like trauma from the past. Um, but for me, it was just, I don't know. Like, I think you got to be, you got to be almost a little bit stupid to start a business. <laughs> you do. It's like, I don't know. It's like you, 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 it, it's like, you don't know what you're doing. You're embarking on this journey of the unknown and you got to be yeah. a little bit dumb for that because as every, because a, a normal person, a smart person will be like, I'm not going down this path. I don't know what's ahead of me. Like I need to protect myself. I need to be safety here. I'm safe here. I know what's here, but entrepreneurs wants to go over there and like, what the hell is over there? I don't know what's over there. We're so you got to be a <laughs> you got to be a little bit weird in the head to go over there. Um, it's like a goalie. Kelsey can relate to that. <laughs> in why, why is it like a goalie? Well, oh, well, you know, who's going to stand in front of a hundred right. mile an hour puck, you know? Right. Uh, right. Kelsey. Right. But uh, I, I agree with, with exactly what you're saying. And, you know, we've had, we've had what actually one of our sponsors now, but uh, I, I was listening to Sean Hart uh, sometime this year, I forget where it was. It might've been Paris or somewhere, some event I went to and he started talking and he's talking about the like old school marketing. I am from old school marketing. I am from e uh, 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 direct mail. You know, that's what we did. Uh, email campaign and all this strategy. And I'm sitting there going, I know all this. And I wasn't doing anything with my Amazon products. Mm. So we ended up talking quite a bit uh, since like over the last few months and we're back in it. Like we've got a bunch of brands now that are doing more direct email or direct mail uh, emails, like steady email campaigns, text campaigns, everything that we should have been doing in the last few years. And I can't tell you that we're seeing a ton of results because we've just started. But as we grow with this, I'm going to tell everybody exactly what's happening with the uh, products that we've uh, we're working with over at uh, post purchase pro and Sean. But uh, anyways, I, I, I wanted to say that because you're always learning and the most important thing that anybody can do is take action. I've had people that are, like a lot of our listeners have reached out and asked me, I don't know what to, to like. You're talking about something three times a week and it's, it's like, you just can't do it. There's not enough time in the day and you're right, but pick something that you might hear over the month and just say, I'm going to commit to one thing I hear and I'm going to do it or once a week or whatever that is. I know when I'm at an event, I don't write down every, I don't record everything. I just take notes and I put the highlight usually of what somebody's talking about. They might have three highlights. At the end of the at the end of that day, I take one of those highlights and mm. I'll do something with it. The other yes. three, if they're that important, I'll get to them later. But at least I followed up and I took action. So yes. uh, I know I'm you know just going on this, but uh, I, I guess I'd like to know um, what was your biggest struggle. Like Man. when did you go? Oh my god, I got kicked. I don't know if I'm getting up. Oh, the, the, I mean, okay. So the, 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 the time that got, we got kicked the hardest was when we got suspended. I mean, that's the ultimate kick in the balls, right? Like that's, <laughs> I mean, that you can't get, you can't, I mean, I guess you can get worse if you get like a big lawsuit or something like that, but that was pretty, pretty bad. Um, we had to deal with, so we weren't on the transparency program. One day I woke yeah. up and there was like 10 hijackers. And uh, I was like, that's really weird. I started calling Amazon. I even bought some of their products and it ended up actually being someone out of Vietnam who was literally, uh, it was a counterfeit product. So our packaging, they literally took our packaging and just produced it in a cheaper way. And they were hijacking our listing with 10 different accounts. 
and um and somehow our account got suspended by me calling Amazon typical and uh that was probably the lowest of the lowest that was my biggest it wasn't a struggle it was just like such a hard hit because when I think of struggle I think of something that's a little bit like a, over a long period of time um and uh and you know we just had to reach out to as many people as possible luckily i had a little bit of network back then just ask people like hey i got suspended like what do i do how do i get suspended like oh write a poa what the hell is a poa like oh this is how you write a poa submit a poa like three four five times honestly i thought for a second that like i wasn't going to be able to get my account back um but after a month or two of trying we ended up getting our account back and it was that was like the worst one or two months of my Amazon FBA journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I quit my job in December, 2017 and by no, sorry, December, 2018 or something like that. I forget. But just a few months after, like five months after our store went from like $40,000 a month to $200,000 per month. So I was like, man, like I'm on top of the, I'm, a, I'm like on top of the world, right? Like six figures a month. Like I quit my job, let's go, you know? And then just like, whack, like it came down with yeah. um, the ban and um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't fun. That was definitely a more, that was definitely a memorable one. Um, but the struggle, what was my biggest struggle during my Amazon FBA journey was, I, you know, I would also say finding new products to launch because we kind of, niche down in the skincare niche right again our brand is called sadara skincare so you guys can <clears throat> go online and look it up but um it was just it was finding the balance of like okay well we're locking this niche we know we want to serve our customers but a lot of the stuff that our customers wanted are super competitive products so what do we do like we can't hmm launch a retinol because like people on page one have thirty thousand reviews like so it was finding that balance of like finding good opportunities with low reviews and low competition, but also keep launching products within a certain niche just because you're so locked into that niche. And skincare is one of the most competitive niches, as you know. So, so skincare supplements, um, pretty, 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 pretty tough to find new products to launch. So I would say that was definitely our biggest struggle. If, if, if I got really good at product launches and found good opportunities, I think the business would have been um, a lot bigger than what we sold it at. Okay. So yeah, anybody who's listening, uh, love to hear what your biggest struggle uh, has been so far. Um, you just throw it in the comment section. Uh, really like to hear what's happening right now. Just kind of get a, a feel for the pulse of Amazon and what's good, bad, and ugly. Okay. Now the opposite, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, did you have any just aha moments that just, you know, oh, your eyes opened up, eyes opened wide, and now I got it. Yeah, the biggest aha moment was actually, do you know Anthony Bui Tran? What? No, he's with, I don't think um, so. no, okay, so he, someone my age, uh, and, uh, I came across one of his videos probably during my second product launch. And, uh, he had this thing called the balls to the walls spreadsheet. And, uh, I owe a lot of my Amazon success to the balls to the wall spreadsheet because in that video, he talked about, he broke down his launch strategy of why he was investing into a third party launch at and, and during that time, you can discount your product by 99% off, and then you can rank mm -hmm. page one by using our launch. And he explained why on a spreadsheet, so very, very numbers-driven, data-driven, why he's using viral launch and to do a giveaway through the super URL to target a specific keyword so that he can get higher ranking for that specific keyword while losing money at the front but his whole thing is like, well, you lose money at the beginning, you launch a product page one, then you're going to get organic sales. And here's the number. So he broke down the entire process of basically the ROI, right? The return on investment. And that's when I had the light bulb moment. I was like, uh, now I get it. Because I didn't know how to launch a product after the first. Uh, I asked a couple of my friends how to launch a product. They said, just put the keyword in your title. And that's how you launch a product. It's like, well, you're not wrong. I mean, you, you got to do that, but that's not how to launch a product, right? 
until I found that uh, video, that was a huge game changer. And uh, that was a very, very early, that was, that was when I was seeing Amazon in black and white. That's when the TV turned to colors, basically. Ah, very good. You know, uh, I was just thinking about, uh, there is a listener. I don't know if she's on today. I haven't seen any comments, but Marsha Reese. So an incredible lady um, has sold like over a billion dollars in sales over her uh, span. Anyways, she got in, she got, uh, she has a fantastic product uh, and she went into Amazon prison over a year ago. So I just wanted to give her a shout out. Uh, she mentioned that she finally was released from jail and uh, now she can get selling back on Amazon. So congrats, Marsha. Let us know how things are going. Um, I, you know, everybody, uh, probably everybody who's listening right now uh, knows of you or has, has heard of you throughout your, your struggles here. So I uh, just wanted to give you a quick shout out and uh, uh, thoughts, prayers are with you that you finally got out of prison. So uh, that, <laughs> we'll have you on and you can tell us uh, about your uh, the two spectrums as well. I already know what the one is. I want to hear the good side. Okay, so let's see. We're going to wrap this up fairly soon. I just wanted to, like one last question. You know, we talked, we touched on it earlier, and that's about differentiating yourself, uh, you know, in a saturated market. So you were talking about some of the products that you did have were, were in a saturated niche. Um, how did you differentiate it? Differentiate differentiate yourself um a lot of it was actually based on branding so mm -hmm. uh, we have a really awesome brand uh focused towards like more luxury high-end type of feel we hired a really good branding designer to create that brand for us it was worth every single penny and we also got really good at influencer marketing because that strategy works really well in the beauty niche so from a tactical perspective that's how we differentiated and then on top of that, we hired uh, one of my friends now. His name is Max Kerwick. I saw him. Um, he had a talk at Ryan Moran's conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was talking about basically building a brand story. Now, my brand story with Star Skincare is a young, hungry Asian man wants to make some money on Amazon. So he launched a skincare product. Uh, that's not a very good uh, brand story. So, oh, And I, I also didn't want to make one up because I think that's kind of just like, you know, you're, you're kind of lying in a way, or I don't, I don't know, depending on how you look at it, but I didn't want to make one up. But what was really cool is like another aha moment was when Max Kerwick said, Hey, you don't need to uh, have your own brand story. You can actually create a brand story two ways. Number one, off of the founder, which in this case, I wasn't qualified. Number two, off of your audience, off of your customer. So you can actually create a brand story off of who your customers are buying it's from. So we actually ended up hiring Max to do a very comprehensive uh, survey with our customers. And he called up people like, hey, my name is Max. I'm from Star Skincare. Like, why did you pick this product? Ask him a series of questions. And then we, had we actually ended up like learning so much about our customers, what they care about. And then we tailored all of our messaging, all of our branding, all of our positioning to that customer. And that's really how um, we were able to just... At the end of the day, if the customer can feel connection with the brand, they will, they'll give you money, right? But if they don't feel connection with the brand, either in the copywriting, the images, the storytelling, the anything, they're not really going to give you money. So people are still looking, we're, we're, we're emotional animals, you know, we're, we're looking to build a connection with other people through either physically or through a brand or through whatever it might be. So I think uh, hiring Max to do what he did with us really brought us uh, brand to life. And, uh, now a lot of people are like, Oh wow, this is actually like a legitimate skincare brand. And that's how we were able to like get into like Nordstrom, like, and we were able to like get into like all these publications, like beauty publications. And, um, yeah, so that was money well spent. I, I've been in branding forever. You know, even before I was born, I was uh, in branding and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, you, you see, some of the brand stories are the brands that try to uh, just, I, I, I would even say outright lie. You can tell, you, you can just tell by reading it. You can exaggerate a little bit and that's fine. You know, why did you get in? What was your passion? And it has to be engaging. 
So you can do that. You like you can look on an Amazon listing just in a title or in the bullets or in the A plus content. You could write like a robot, but if you have that engaging content, people are going to take note. And that's the same with your brand story. So if you want to go to Fiverr and hire somebody for twenty bucks, go ahead and do it. But I bet you the money that you spent was you know a pretty good chunk of change. And you got, like you said, your money's worth and it makes it all worth it. People are afraid to spend money sometimes, but on branding or, you know, even a brand consultant, um, brand packaging, uh, trademarks, anything that could be associated with that brand is so important to, to, to spend money. Um, similar to, I just got this the other day, somebody was uh, creating a trademark for themselves. I said, Yep, you can save a couple bucks, but it's just not worth it. You know, you'll yeah. you'll five years from now or two months from now, uh, you'll feel it. But uh, anyways, let's get to a couple of the questions. I think we have four questions. Okay, and I just want to mention that we are at the top of the hours too. So if Tom, if we need to cut this off, just let us know um, and we can um, move on. Uh, but yes, we did have a couple of questions. Uh, let me see from Manny. Uh, when did you decide to stop working on a product that does not seem to take off? Like, where is that point? Yeah, you'll know. Like, you, you'll you know when, the, when you're trying everything you can to make the product take off and like it just doesn't, it doesn't move. Every single time you rank it to page one, it falls down to bottom page one, bottom page two. Like you're doing all the things that you should be doing and it's just not picking up steam. Uh, after you know your first order or second order, like it's time to cut it. So that's how I look at it. Um, but if the product is even making you five hundred, a thousand, two thousand bucks a month in profit, like why not keep it? So uh, that's a personal preference thing. So I just kept mine. Okay. Okay. Great. I also saw that uh, Bradley Sutton is joining oh, us. Oh, so what's, what's up, Bradley? Mr. Bradley? Okay, well, man. All right. Um, from Claudia, uh, Tom. Now that the TOS has changed from the balls to the wall. <laughs> LOL. Uh, Days, how do you suggest we launch your products? Are there videos or other hopefully free resources you suggest for new sellers? Yes, I'm going to make a shameless plug here, but I just launched a YouTube video last week on my channel about the best launch strategy going forward. And it's by using social media to a landing page to building up a pre-launch list. So I actually made a pretty in-depth video on how to do that on my YouTube channel. So uh, instead of going on off here, I would uh, just refer you to that video. So I'll be plagiarizing that fairly soon and publishing <laughs> that as a Lunch with Norm video. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, from Boxer, I think along the same, same lines. Uh, so with the balls to the wall strategy, would you say one could use that to relaunch a product? Um, or is that something that was you can't really do anymore? Well, you can't do the 99% giveaway thing anymore. So you got a, a, a launch strategy versus a relaunch strategy, in my opinion, is pretty much the same thing. Like Amazon, you got to understand how Amazon cares about ranking. And that's purely just, if you can drive sales to a listing and get a lot of sales, they'll rank you, like period. That's the most important thing. Um, you know, I know a lot of brands that like they don't even have like they don't know how to do Amazon. They don't like do super URLs, that URL, this URL. They just like have a massive email list and they say, hey, like we're going to sell on Amazon now. They send an email list out and people buy their products on Amazon. They get ranked. They're like, oh, I don't even know how I got ranked. It's like full price organic sales is king. So you got to figure out a way how to do that. And there's no difference between a launch and a relaunch. And one thing that we talk about uh, on the podcast is you got to keep up to date. Like if, if you go back, let's say to a spreadsheet that is uh, popular in 2018 or 19, yes. that doesn't mean it's going to work today. So just kind of keep up, you know, with the times, do some research. There's always videos. Uh, Bradley, for example, you know, he's always got some uh, good videos on uh, projects that he's working on. So uh, anyways, yeah, just, just make sure that you do your research and just, if you're looking at something that's 2016, I don't know if it's going to work. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. And I posted the uh, video uh, from your channel, Tom. So if you're interested, audience, just go to the comment section and you'll be able to find it. And our last question uh, looks like it's from Boxer about inserts. So question for you both. Uh, seeing both of you have your insert templates on Helium 10, what size insert do you find best in getting results? 
Oh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit washed up from uh, from this specific question because I sold the brand December 2020, and I don't exactly remember what we had in the insert. But I do know now that with insert, you definitely, I, I think QR codes is obviously making a huge comeback due to COVID. So definitely in the QR codes of some sort. And I think the best way to get people to do it, it's just incentivize people, right? People want an incentive. People, no one's going to scan a QR code if there's nothing on the other side for them. So how do you incentivize that person? Um, depending on your niche, like, I don't know, what do they like? What do they enjoy? If you're selling a pet product, do they enjoy, a, you know, uh, a guide to a healthy living dog that has three, you know, top supplements that a, every single dog should take? Like, yeah, that seems interesting to me. This lady I met the other day, she's like, my dog, um, you know, lived up to until a thousand, uh, a thousand, uh, 17 years. And I was like, holy crap. Like I talked to her for like 20 minutes. I'm like, tell me everything I, I need to know. She's like, feed him, feed him this, feed him that blah, blah, blah. Well, if she turned that into a guide, any dog owner will want that. So like, yeah. you ought to understand what's important to the actual customer. Then boom, scan the QR code, get their email, give them the guide. That's how you capture. And then now you got to nurture. So there's two things with emails, right? Capture and nurture and then, uh, and then promotion. But um, that's what I would do. Yeah. For, for inserts, uh, first of all, on the size thing, it depends on the packaging that you, you have. Uh, if I can do a, a, like a postcard size, uh, I, hey, that's great. Sometimes uh, the inserts actually printed on the package when you open it up, kind of revealing the product it'll be on the inside of the package as well. Uh, so you can see it, but uh, we've got a, we've had a few requests for inserts and Kelsey and I were just talking about this. We're going to do a full prod, uh, podcast on just creating and bringing out inserts. Most important thing to me with an insert is like you were saying, QR code, but the dynamic. So you have a dynamic uh, QR code where you can change it, like maybe on the seasons or whatever the promotion is. But we are going to get right. to it. Um, Tom has got to run. Uh, okay. So thank you, Tom. Tom, it was awesome. Uh, any contact information, uh, people, uh, so they can contact you after the podcast? Yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, is uh, Tom, so T-O-M-D-O-T-C-O-M, so Tom.com. Dot IG. There's a bunch of fake profiles. Make sure you don't follow those. Pick the right one. They will scam you out of crypto. That's what. That's the scam on Instagram these days. They'll copy someone and then message all their followers and ask for crypto stuff. So make sure you follow the same one, uh, the right one. And uh, yeah, my YouTube channel is Tom Wang. Um, and uh, yeah, my my book uh, over here somewhere. We haven't done a proper launch yet, but you can buy it on Amazon now. Uh, and then the Audible version as well. And then um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, Tom. Well, thanks for coming on. Too bad you're missing the wheel of Kelsey, but yeah, we did run over. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I had, another call. Time. I had another call scheduled. I have to, uh, I have to run for that one. But uh, thanks for bringing me on, Norm. I know, I know you're, uh, you've done a lot of these, and uh, you're just giving people free value on how to build an Amazon business. So we all appreciate what you've done in the uh, Amazon community. You, you're just hey, no problem. A lot of no work problem in, at all. So I'm sure a lot of people appreciate that. Hey, you know what? Uh, I just uh, love sharing the information and bringing on great people like yourself. So, Tom, Good next stuff. time in Vancouver, we'll go out and uh, and uh, have a bite. Yes, sir. I love that. Okay, we'll see you later. All right, everybody. So, hey. stay tuned. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Hashtag Tom and tag two people. You'll get on. Uh, hashtag two. <laughs> How about we say this again? Tag two people, and you'll get a second entry. Uh, Kelsey, go to us. Uh, please uh yeah anytime all right you're just, you're just, just throwing click, these you're just click uh, the, throwing hit, hit the bloody button if you're selling on amazon in 2022 you know how important it is to stand out from your competition let hona worldwide lend a helping hand with your product innovation to outcompete your competition online that's right sit back relax and enjoy the success of your newly innovative product while Hono handles all the work. Visit honoworldwide.com for more information. That's Honu, H-O-N-U, worldwide.com or email savings at honuworldwide.com. Okay, so Sean Hart, 
Seth, um, you can blame Kelsey for not putting on your commercial. I just wanted to say uh-huh. it. I know that coaches, oh, Kelsey, well, they're going to complain over to you. So just not All me. Right, I'll take that. You. Okay. You know what? It's been a it's been a long day. Okay. <laughs> I think okay, we both okay. had some trip ups today. But uh, <laughs> if you are interested in Post Purchase Pro, we do have a special link just for Lunch with Norm Beardos in the description box. Uh, it's postpurchasepro.com slash lunch. Uh, check it out. And uh, yeah, I believe you get some free tips. And um, yeah, check it out in the descriptions. Um, and any of uh, Tom's contact information as well, that's all in the description too. All so right. if you want to check out the Instagram, YouTube, um, you can do that as well. And uh, yes, we still have some people joining our Wheel of Kelsey today. We haven't done it just yet. Um, I just want to run through some comments. Uh, your friend Joe Wall says, Mr. Hey, Beard. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Boxer1986, uh, super helpful. Thanks. Can't wait for the insert video, Norm. Can you do a packaging one soon too, please? So I think this is a great idea too, even if this is a more, um, just a, a smaller YouTube video, just action yep. points, I think. Um, we could really, uh, it could really be helpful for the Beard Nation. So if you do have questions, topics, suggestions, let us know. You can email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. But uh, yeah, we can jump to the uh, Wheel of Kelsey if that sounds good to you. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Hit wheel the of Kelsey. Button. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right, it's the Wheel of Kelsey. So today we're giving away uh, Tom's uh, book. We also have a press release and a Lunch with Norm mug that's going to be all in a nice little goodie bag for you. So I'm going to just shuffle these up. I'm just going to double check we didn't miss anyone. I think we have everyone here. And uh, Kelsey, did you say you were going to hand deliver it? Uh, I did not and oh, will not, okay. unfortunately. Okay. okay. But I will give you guys a nice little email. Uh, so here we go. We'll shuffle it up and spin. If you are the winner, please contact me within 48 hours so we know you got the prize. And let's see who the winner is. You got it. Christine. Christine. Very good. Christine's wow. cleaning up on some of these wheels of Kelsey. I know. I think they, they didn't win at all for the longest time. And now they've got, I think, two back-to-back wins so congratulations <laughs> rich and christine um so yes email me k at lunch with and uh we can connect you with your prize and your your new book and press release along with a bug so um i think that's about it yeah okay we're good to go well that's it for today's show um yeah that's uh it, it's great uh you know the information that tom was giving us about how to build up some of the struggles some of the positive moments and, and some of the bad moments and to look for when you're uh, trying to find a new product and the new opportunities in 2022. So uh, we are back on Friday and I think, oh, who's on? I, I, who's on on Friday? Um, it's it's Mayor, Mar- right? It. Yeah, Mayor. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be a good one too. So you definitely want to uh, stay tuned for that. Um, it's going to be talking, we're talking about Shopify versus Amazon. You know, what are the differences? What are the similarities? And uh, what an interesting guy. I met him at Rise uh, this year at, in Orlando and just had um, some really good conversations with him. So anyways, he's going to be on on Friday. And that's it for today. So what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. I'm just oh, okay. reading you some just, of Christine's just, comments. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just thought you just going to keep her mug for herself, I think. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, right. Oh, what? I do want to give a shout out. We only mentioned this once during the podcast, but yeah. um, Kevin King's Billion Dollar Seller Summit. Um, you can get $1,000 off your ticket. This is something that only Lunch with Norm listeners will get. Um, he never does this. This is something that he's only given us. So if you want, if you're planning on going to Billion Dollar Seller Summit, um, it's I know it's expensive, but this is something that if you were planning on going, you can get a great discount here. So check it out. Um, the link is here. You get $1,000 off. Just follow the link. Um, and then also Tom's uh, course, or he has some free courses too that we mentioned or free access to some of his lessons. Um, so if you are interested in checking out Tom's course, 
you can go over to uh, fbamasterclass.io slash free training. I want to drop the comments in there as well, just so everyone knows we got some freebies today, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that quickly before we wrapped everything up. And uh, now the floor is yours. You're not going to interrupt me again, are you? Maybe. Okay, I'm thinking it. Actually. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're going to wrap this up. I don't care if Kelsey interrupts me. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And our community, you're awesome. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you on Friday. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.